Hello and welcome to this week's look at action and film on TV. How are you? I'm very well, just having a cup of tea. Look, it's a Bond mug. Look at this. Look at how exciting people will be. They'll be so thrilled to see me drinking something. It's just tea, by the way. Mmm. 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 Lovely. I do like a cuppa. Now, this week we are looking at, um, well, a practically an institution on his own uh it is um norman wisdom sir norman wisdom as of 2019 and um a remarkable individual who took slapstick comedy to a new level the type of things maybe later on in life that people like lee evans uh, I'm talking predominantly from a British audience point of view. If anybody overseas has no idea who these people are, just Google them. Uh, Lee Evans, of course, has been in a number of movies. Uh, Mouse Hunt, was that one of his? Um, and uh, But he, a very physical comedian. Uh, there were similar physical comedians back in the uh, 60s and 70s. Charlie Drake was one of them, uh, worked on an ITC television show called The Worker and uh, had a number of situations where he was involved in knock-about comedy. Uh, the pratfall, the way in which uh, Buster Keaton and Charlie Chaplin would have done in those that silent era, but taken on, really, on the mantle of that. And Norman was a, a character who had a terrible childhood, I mean, it's safe to say, a really very, very poor childhood. And if it wasn't for... Uh, one occasion where he was sleeping rough on a park bench, which used to happen quite often, and he would uh, there was a, um, a coffee uh, vendor, uh, like a takeaway type mobile van, and uh, he would occasionally go to to this guy and you know look at him very sadly with those those big eyes of his, and the guy would give him a cup of tea and a meat pie. Now, on the strength of that, that was how he managed to get himself through, but the guy, after a while, said, look, you know, you keep coming back here, you keep doing this time and time again, join the army. You're a young man, uh, you know, you're a fairly decent nick. All right, you've had it bad, but maybe they can give you a little something, and more importantly, you know, three meals a day, uh, bed to sleep in at night, all of that sort of stuff. So he he signed up. Do you know he was in the army for 16 years? 16 years is a very, very long time uh, if you check out his active service. Uh, uh, as far as um, um, able seaman was concerned, and then joining the army. So he was uh, um, uh, part of the Navy for a period of time, but the rest of it was sold out in the army. 16 years. Normally, they, nine years is often a maximum, particularly if you're going in uh, with no previous experience. So anyway, he's gone in, he's done 16 years. In that time, he's learned everything. Firstly, you know, he's got himself into tip-top physical condition. He, uh, an extraordinary uh, sportsman, boxed very well. Uh, uh, won awards for his boxing, won a number of bouts whilst in the army. Um, was also uh, very involved in uh, in athletics, in whether it be uh, uh, sprinting or long jump, and uh, swimming. He was very good at as well, which all of these things would then later on play a big part. Um, and also, he got a, an opportunity to learn how to play music, play the piano, play the drums, play the clarinet. Uh, you know, you name it, he could play it. I mean, he was very, very talented and picked stuff up very quickly. And again, that type of education uh, and that type of mindset to be able to watch, learn, you know, visual learning, all of that sort of stuff. And he picked it up very, very quickly. And it was a big part of his life. The knockabout comedy obviously started when he was doing little bits and pieces in in, uh, in the army. And then when he left the army, this uh, got an opportunity through Dame Vera Lynn, the force's sweetheart, as she was back in WW2, to, you know, get a chance to uh, appear on the bill with her, further down the bill, but gave him an opportunity. And uh, nine times out of ten, he might have been first spot, and people were rolling about in the aisles because he really, really managed to just find that little something and uh, and niche his way into, into comedy. 
uh, after that, of course, it was all plain sailing because he would work himself to the bone doing movie after movie after uh, variety uh, shows, television later when that came in play. So the type of stuff that we're going to look at, um, we're going to start by looking at some of his uh, pratfalls, the way in which he would do it in public. Um, there's a couple of occasions which we're, we're going to look at there. And then I tried to put together some uh, some of his uh, um, action from his very popular movies throughout the late 50s and early 60s. Um, and you get a flair for how important he was and more importantly how important that then worked out with his stunt performers everybody says oh norman did all his, all his own stunts well yeah he did and then he didn't you know he did the ones that he was capable of doing and you'll have an example of those in a few moments but you'll also have examples of ones which were done by other people primarily his stuntman tex fuller who um, not only doubled uh, Charlie Drake that we mentioned before, also Melvin Hayes used to double him as well, and Warren Mitchell for a period of time. And you'll see in one of the clips that we've got, you'll see uh, an actual image of Tex as uh, as he was. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, he'll be doubling for Norman in a couple of situations. He'll have a wig on, uh, but we've we've managed to highlight him and also doing some some terrific stuff and really keeping that momentum going. And giving again that priority, that possibility of, of the audience going, well, look, he's doing it all himself. That's what it is. The editor is key. Um, and the relationship between Tex Fuller and uh, Norman Wisdom lived long in, uh, in the film business, certainly. So uh, let's explore that now. We'll regroup afterwards. Here we go. Here's a good example of Norman's pratfall work. He's worked this out, so the timing's important. He has to constantly keep moving. This is episode Wogan that he's appearing on. And he arrives and keeps his momentum as he plumps himself down into the seat, which then rocks it over backwards. And the leg, the bottom leg breaks and boom, then he goes down onto the ground. It's cleverly done. It is rehearsed, but it's cleverly done. And... Uh, Terry sells the whole thing by just getting out of the way at the last time and the audience go because <gasps> they weren't aware of it. And you see the bottom, one of the legs is uh, is broken. When he, when he sits the chair back up, you see that it's all all over the place. But uh, he would do that a lot at the bottom, back end of the legs broken. Here's another one, another great example. Look, traps his fingers, tries to get away. And then, boing, look at that. That's brilliant. Very, very clever. Let's look at it again. So he's got his finger inside, his hand inside, holding onto the piano, then goes to make a move away, swinging himself up into the air and down on, on his back as well, onto the ground, hand breaks his fall, and the other one stays absolutely straight in the piano. It's magnificent, you know, really clever little stuff that's going on. But this is from years of Pratt falling and doing it for a living, you know. So he's worked this out to the last detail, and these are terrific. But that was the type of stuff that then transferred itself into film. And, uh, you know, having having the ability to transfer that to a live situation. Here's a, an idea from Trouble in Store. This is roller skating. That's definitely Norman there, roller skating. You cut, That's a back projection. But you can't mess about with his positioning. Nobody looks like that that's him as well that's him moving very clearly there's a sequence here here that's not him i don't know who that is but that's not him and then he's towed along by the truck with the ladder and then drops down the hole you know it's all lovely visual stuff it's terrific and uh, even this is this is not in the film but this is him you know he can't stop himself from whip <laughs> falling and again doing it very well um, here's an example from Press for Time Wire works So somebody throws him a bundle And way he goes up And lands in the awning If you look at it again slowly There's the wire right just behind his neck And there you see it So he's wired up He's attached to a crane Which lifts him up And drops him like that uh, Stitch in Time Combination of Norman doing the first part 
and his stuntman Tex Fuller doing the rest. Down here, up through the wall, then a cutaway shot. I was always under the impression this was a dummy. and But it, it doesn't look like it is. It is Tex falling through that and landing. And then it cuts away to Norman doing a great deal of stuff for real on top of the ambulance. That's all back projection. But this shot isn't. And he has no business being up there. You know, it really doesn't need to to be there at all. And then to cup finalise the sequence is world class special effects. Oh dear. We'll have a look at that again in a minute when he arrives on the ward and Patrick Cargill turns up and says, uh, "Why is that man out of bed?" Um, and look, he goes, "Look at this! Look at the state of this cutting edge special effects in 1963." And up and through the window, unbelievable. Now. Always performing. This is when he was receiving his knighthood from Her Majesty the Queen. And uh, they've known each other for many, many years. He did lots of command performances. She dubs him there. She goes back now and receives the uh, um, KB itself and places it over his neck. There's a brief chat. And then the Queen, when she's ready, she then handshakes and pushes away there that's her pushing away to say your time's done and as he walks away trip <laughs> she catches sight of it the audience laughs he just couldn't stop himself that's the thing i thought was fantastic uh here's a movie called on the beat this is a, an example of some terrific agility not only by him but by some of the other performers in the sequence firstly uh, this is a dream sequence at the start. He's not actually being shot here. But there is a remarkable moment when he does a flat back here with no arms. You know, you need to get momentum in order to swing yourself into position. And he does... Look at that. I mean, that's unbelievably good. We'll come back to that in just a second, just to prove it. Like, so, And it's actually his, his landlady prodding him and going, Cup of tea! Have a cup of tea! Of course, he's going through all of this and then falls off the bed, obviously. To then think, good Lord, what was that? Did you have a cup of tea, Norman? Oh, lovely, thank you. Right, so watch this. He comes out of it and not with... He just flips, standing still, flips straight onto his back. Now, that's pretty good. That really is very clever. Lots of falling down, lots of stair falls. You know, this is bread and butter to him. Um... But the agility in this next sequence, so he's being chased by, well, evidently, everybody in... I don't know where this is set. I don't know where this is set, but it's um, obviously the police chasing him en masse. Uh, what what had happened leading up to this, just to give you some idea, he was playing football with some kids in the street and was using his whistle as the referee. Everybody, all the other policemen, heard the whistle and came running. So he's trying to escape by going through the gardens if you remember hot fuzz that's where they got this idea from i imagine uh being chased through the gardens and out the other side he's hurdling stuff and oh nearly in the water so has to run around the outside up over the top of that round the other. and these guys not so lucky falling in there falling over that there's a manure thing coming up in a moment which is quite nice tripping falling bouncing up over that up oh, over that one as well through the chicken sorry guys way bosh look at these guys fantastic so lots of physicality oh he's had to go oh, oh he's got his feet wet in that one and then again <laughs> just lay into that one thinks i'll hide in here oh hang on i won't hide in here i do beg your pardon sir. <laughs> here i'm trying to have a number two in here the early bird is a great example of action, right, from from this. Here's a, a text full of doing huge amounts of work. Here's Edward Chapman. He is Mr. Grimsdale. He then goes up the stairs. That's not him. That's Tex Fuller. And there's a reason for that. It's a long shot. And he comes up partway, whoop, and down he goes after tripping. Norman does exactly the same thing, only on this occasion, it's not him. It's Tex Fuller. I'll, I'll explain that. There's probably been two takes Tex has had a go, he's gone all the way down to the bottom, and then Norman's had a go, and it's not quite what the director's been looking for, so they've said, no, 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 we'll do it the other way around. And then Tex gets another opportunity to do a different fall in character. It's a completely different fall this time. Very clever. And then later on, of course, <laughs> grabs, the, grabs the wallpaper. Oh, 
Did he spill some of it? Well, uh, will I pour it back in the... No, I'll have a drink. I'm absolutely gasping. Ah, there we are. That's it. The spot. Lovely. Oh, don't want to dribble, lose anything. And goes back to trying to deliver the cup of tea. But So they're all done very, very cleverly. This is from the same movie where he's playing a rather overexcited um, golfing priest and hits the ball and goes for a Burton down the bank. Physicality is enormous in this. Later on in the picture, they go, oh my God. So they get to the dairy, the company that's the the uh, the competing dairy, and um, hilarity ensues in the form of, again, Norman being accosted by lots of people. Oi! Gives him a cuff and sends him off down the stairs. Look, and then for one reason, there look is Derek Martin. Derek Martin played Charlie Slater in. Um, EastEnders for 16 years but prior to doing that uh, prior to being uh, an actor he was a stuntman and worked with Derek Ware and the Havoc organisation so he's in this you'll see Tex in this as well in a minute and there's lots of look at this just knockabout comedy so the fireman the chief fireman has um, rather bizarrely there's Tex Fuller um, rather bizarrely given Norman an opportunity to put his uniform on and be in charge of the hose uh, which is obviously quite uh, not quite what they were looking for there's Del Baker who's hanging on to Norman for grim death to try and keep him on the ground again Tex and Derek going through the motions of falling down Mr Grimsdale is stuck inside a lift and is uh, getting drenched by good old Norman and again in just a moment we'll see another example of wire work for this sequence there's a hook on the top and Joe Dunn on the right hand side is the other fireman trying to keep him in place they suddenly realise what's been going on now they're hooked up to the milk they've run out of water they've hooked up to milk now and he's realised oh dear what have I done oh that's the fireman that's the chief fireman on the right hand side whose uniform is now missing because Norman's wearing it and he tries to get away and they do one of those you know mid-budget um, special effect sequences with a matte painting and a dummy and a miniature and he dives out of the window and there's the matte painting and then the dummy and there's another dummy shot and then he bounces on that and lands in a vehicle and the accelerator kicks in the handbrake drops off and he drives into a building and then just to accentuate it look they put all these fabulous <laughs> cracks all over the building if you haven't seen any Norman Wisdom movies and you're not from Albania, because obviously you will have seen everything that Norman's ever done if you were in Albania. But if you're not from Albania and you haven't seen anything from Norman Wisdom, uh, particularly those people in the States and overseas who may not be familiar with him, do. It's huge fun. There's, you know, it's not a difficult watch. It's belly laugh stuff. And then at the end of the movie, Norman gets an opportunity to perform that stairfall for real this time and de oop, down he goes look in character to the very end an appropriate way to end but i tell you what norman just magnificent and um if you haven't seen it do check them out please i insist right there you are a good example of watching norman and tex intertwine uh so that the audience is still fully aware of the fact that it's probably Norman. Probably Norman. All that uh, uh, fire stuff, you know, the early bird stuff, the firemen, all that sort of bits and pieces. I mean, that's just pure chaos. And a perfect situation for a knockabout comedian. Wire gags that they then started to develop, allowing him to move up and down uh, with that hose and firing it about all over the place and knocking people over. Um, brilliant really really also Derek Martin Derek Martin I mentioned there was uh, um, Charlie Slater in um, EastEnders for 16 years uh, and had been a face in Sweeney's and all sorts of stuff uh, you know as an actor but prior to that he was a stuntman and he worked with Derek Ware in the organisation Havoc um, which of course was an agency and then prior to 
uh, the British stunt or the equity stunt register coming along, them, them creating their own register, uh, you know, Derek kind of corner of the market. And everybody at that time, all those early faces that would have worked in film and television around those days, they have all worked in some shape or form with Derek uh, on a number of occasions in that Havoc organisation. But it was nice to see um, Derek Martin in there as well. So uh, that's it. Uh, if you haven't... Um, seen any Norman Wisdom stuff go and check it out there's plenty online to be doing um, there's some lovely box sets as well if you really are a fan there's some terrific still terrific box sets and uh, also um, I don't forget to, to check out uh, when you write Norman Wisdom write Albania as well because he was oh Albania they absolutely loved him in Albania he also had a top 10 hit in Albania um, Tony Hawks, do you remember Tony Hawks? Uh, again, those people overseas may not know, but Tony Hawks was part of a band called uh, Morris Minor and the something or others, I can't remember what it was, but they had a, a hit many moons ago called Stutter Rap, uh, a one hit wonder. On the strength of that, he was given a bit of a, te a quiz or an option to, uh, to create a, te you know, a top 10 hit uh, before he was. 40, I think that's what it was, or something like that. That was the deal. And uh, anyway, he managed to tag onto the whole idea that, well, hang on, Norman's really popular, and uh, and he's popular in Albania. I know we'll have a song about Norman, or about Albania, with Norman involved. Of course, you, as soon as you couple those two things together, uh, the, the, uh, there's documentaries out there, you'll see that Norman Wisdom was a god in Albania, because his, sh his movies were shown at cinemas weekly. You know, over and over and over again, and generation and generation and generation had then gone to see him on the big screen, loved him, adored him, and he had become the the most remarkable icon uh, for the Albanian people. So all of this, you know, uh, it's a fascinating story. Go and check out some of his stuff. Next week, well, next week, ooh, I say, it's a belter next week. You don't want to miss it. Uh, Richie Guyona. So. That's what's going to happen. Richie Guyona, um, his family, the uh, flying the flying Guyonas, uh, who were the biggest uh, trapeze act in the world back in the 60s and 70s, made the transition to uh, a film and uh, stunt work, and uh, we will catch up with him next week. Uh, don't forget to check out the Pod Dojo Network, the people responsible for the podcast, and go and explore their stuff as well. And until next time, it's bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.